I was born and, ra and raised, reared in Port Arthur, Texas. There were 12 in my family. There was nine boys uh, and three girls. Out of the nine boys and my family, eight of us went to, to the service during wartime. And we were all fortunate, we all returned. Thank God. 20-year-old Lucian Adams joined the Army in 1943 and was sent to fight in Italy with the 3rd Division of the 30th Infantry. On the Anzio beachhead, Staff Sergeant Adams knocked out an enemy machine gun position and enabled the company to advance, an action for which he would later receive a Bronze Star. But this was only a precursor to the remarkable heroism Adams would display in October of 1944 near St. D. France, where his company was attempting to open a supply line that had been cut off by the Germans. My outfit was called to uh, make an attack to liberate and to reestablish contact with two companies that had been cut off by the enemy. And uh, my company commander uh, selected me to make a, a a patrol and see what was holding up. So I went and I saw three machine guns, you know, on the roadside. I told him there was three machine guns set up there. And he says, you know what's up there. He said, you lead the company into the attack. Staff Sergeant Adams and his men had progressed less than 10 yards when they came under heavy machine gun fire, which killed three of his men and wounded six. The rest of his unit took cover, but Adams, armed with a Browning automatic rifle, made a fearless lone assault on the enemy. Despite the intense enemy fire, Adams got close enough to the first two machine gunners to kill them using hand grenades. He shot and killed six other Germans and forced two of their infantrymen to surrender. Finally, Adams killed the third machine gunner with a burst of BAR fire. In just 10 minutes, Adams had single-handedly cleared the woods of hostile elements and reopened the severed supply line. I was just a youngster then. I was, I was, was going to be 22 years of age. And when you're, when you're young, you, 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 you have no, no fears, generally. I never had any fear. And uh, you, you do things so uh, uh, automatically because of the training that you had in the States that you don't take time to think how serious, you know, the predicaments you get into uh, sometimes that before you know it, you're in it to your head and you just have to fight your way out. It was April the 24th of 1945. There was five of us received the Medal of Honor at the same time. It was presented to us by General Alexander Patch, the Fifth Army Commander in Europe. In the famous uh, Zeppelin Stadium in Nuremberg, Germany, where Hitler used to make his famous speeches back in the late 30s. It was a stadium that had a big swastika in the background. And uh, the uh, engineers set it up where they draped the American flag over the swastika that you could see for miles and miles. But after we were decorated, the five of us was decorated, it wasn't two minutes that the engineers had exploded that swastika, and uh, it just blew that swastika in, to pieces. And it was a, a big thrill, and a big satisfaction. Look, a poor little uh, infantry man here being decorated uh, in Hitler's famous stadium. It's a big responsibility because you have to uh, not only 
uh, conduct yourself, you know, uh, with some dignity and some honor because you're not representing you, yourself, you're representing the entire group of the recipients, uh, living and uh, posthumous awardees. So uh, I try my best to uh, be a good example, be a leader in uh, being a recipient.